Demo Man is the overpowered class that nobody seems to play. Just to be clear, I'm talking about stock demo men here. There's certainly no shortage of demo knights. While I think there are a plethora of reasons why demo man seems to be rarely picked when compared to some other classes, I think it boils down to one thing that demo just lacks. Self-sufficiency. Where classes like soldier and scout shine on the flank and in 1v1 situations, demo man can struggle. I'm not saying that Demo Man can't win 1v1s, he's just much less consistent at them than Soldier and Scout. On the contrary, both Scout and Soldier can struggle during teamfights where Demo's true power as the strongest DPS class in the game really shines through. Scout can get zoned by sentries and large groups of enemies, and Soldier's relatively small clip of just 4 rockets can sometimes just feel inadequate. And then there's the perfect carry class, the Demo Man. Large groups of enemies are no problem for Demo, and sentries, well... Sentries are strange farm. Doing well as a demo is all about learning how to play into his strengths and avoiding his weaknesses. You can think of Demo Man as a character that takes more initial effort to reach a proficient level when compared to other damage-oriented classes, but once you get to a certain point, it pays dividends. Before I get to the matchups, let me get some general advice out of the way. If you're a somewhat experienced Demo Man, you might not like this first part, but you need to hear it. Use your stickies. Stickies are Demo Man's primary weapon despite being in the secondary slot. The reasons for this are simple but applicable in so many situations. Stickies, when compared to pipes, are easier to aim, they have a higher maximum damage, and, as I'll talk about more in this video, they can literally manipulate the battlefield in your favor because you can choose where to place them and when to detonate them. Stickies are also a reason that the Demo vs Pyro fight is actually much better for the Demo player, but I'll get into that later. I know that tons of demo players are more comfortable using pipes. I myself preferred pipes when I started to play more demo man, but as I got more experience I came to the realization that pipes work best against players that are below your skill level. When you really think about it, hitting a pipe is kind of like hard reading your opponent, assuming that they're playing a somewhat fast moving character. If you are able to consistently hard read your opponents, then you are better at the game than them. If you're playing against somebody at a similar or greater skill level, landing pipes consistently will be much more difficult. Stickies do take a little while to get used to, but once you get the hang of them, it will allow you to progress faster as a demo man player. If you're looking to be the best demo man you can be, you should start to master the sticky bomb launcher. Make yourself use stickies and only pull out your grenade launcher when stickies aren't an option, and you will improve very quickly. This is a good place to mention that good utilization of your sticky bombs is going to allow you to hit pipes more often. If you are already good at landing pipes, learning the way of the Sticky Bomb Launcher will only make you a better player in the long run. If you are unsure when you should be using your stickies or your pipes, remember that stickies are OP and ideal for mid-range. At a very short or long range, pipes are usually better. Since they have no damage falloff, pipes are really good for long range spam. If you connect a pipe, you can deal a cool 100 damage from across the map. That's right sniper players, there's another egregiously overpowered class in the game. If you didn't know, stickies take 0.7 seconds to arm for detonation, so at point blank range, pipes are the better option. This doesn't mean that stickies are useless at close range, just that they are harder to actually get value out of. Now that I've gotten the obligatory USE YOUR STICKIES out of the way, I would argue that there are three skills that you will need to learn that will help you immensely when fighting every class in TF2. I'll do my best to separate these skills into separate short sections, but keep in mind that these are all interconnected in many ways. That being said, the first essential skill is aim. Despite seeming to be very simple, aim is quite complicated on a character like Demo Man. I'll only go over general advice for aiming in this section since your aim is going to depend on what class you are shooting at, as well as the number of targets. For aiming stickies at a single target, you have two options. You can try to have the sticky land right at the target's feet, or rather where your opponent's feet will be in 7 tenths of a second, in order to detonate it immediately. The second option is to aim the sticky in such a way to zone your opponent. This means that the sticky will prevent your target from moving in a certain direction unless they want to eat the damage from that sticky. The first option is most useful when shooting at relatively immobile targets such as a heavy or a waddling soldier. Using your stickies to zone your opponents is almost essential against fast moving targets such as a scout. Of course, this statement is only true against players who know how to utilize their fast movement. Newer players, as well as many experienced players, have very predictable movement patterns. That is just a nice way of saying that they move in straight lines. The point here is that aiming to single dot your stickies on an opponent is more ammo efficient and has a faster time to kill than zoning them. It's up to you to evaluate the skill of your opponent and decide which aiming style is better in your current situation. 
Aiming your pipes is conceptually much simpler. Pipes explode after either a short timer, dealing a small amount of damage, or after directly hitting an opponent, dealing a lot of damage. You will almost exclusively be trying to land direct hits because of this. While this is simpler to grasp than aiming stickies, in practice it is much more difficult since every pipe that you land requires you to hard read your opponent's movement. Of course, there are many pipe spam lanes that can also net you damage, but this is more map knowledge than it is aiming. The best advice that I have for pipe aim is to remember that your grenades travel in an arc. You can use this to your advantage in many situations, but it also means that you will need to aim above your opponents depending on their distance from you. Remember to aim where your opponent will be, not where they currently are, as well as keep in mind the time it will take for your grenade to travel to that spot. As I mentioned before, many players have extremely predictable movement, and over time you will start to learn and recognize this. In reality, pipe aim is really just prediction. You will eventually reach a point where you can easily two-pipe many players. Moving on to the second essential skill, movement. This includes sticky jumping, wazzed movement during a fight, damage surfing, pipe jumping, and any other mechanic related to getting around the map. While movement is important for simply reaching team fights as fast as possible and as healthy as possible, it is also very important for dodging damage during fights. In other TF2 guides, movement is often glossed over or entirely overlooked. Having good movement will improve your survivability, which is incredibly important on such a high impact class like Demo. Similar to aim, your movement will depend on what class or classes you are fighting. I don't have many general tips for movement other than to avoid predictable movement while in combat. This means don't walk in straight lines, never stand still, and air strafe while explosive jumping. I would consider movement to be a more subconscious action than aiming, and thus it is best learned by playing the game. If you are trying to improve your boots on the ground movement, remember to incorporate diagonal and curved movement. What I mean by this is, instead of only using forward, back, left, and right independent of each other, you can hold A and S to move backwards and to the left, making you harder to hit with splash damage as well as harder to track or flick to. You can also implement your mouse into your movement since you don't need to track your opponents as a demo man due to your single fire nature. This way, you can move in arcs instead of straight lines and diagonals. Your movement will also depend on your positioning, which segues into the third essential skill, positioning. Positioning is a complicated subject that, again, depends on the classes that you are fighting. Some general tips are, play high ground whenever possible, avoid unnecessarily peaking sniper sight lines, and avoid overextending by playing around your team. Positioning will vary depending on both teams' class compositions, the game state, and the skill of the high impact players in the server. Arguably the best demo man position advice I could give you is to hold choke points. Every map has choke points that your opponents have to walk through to get to an objective, and it is much, much easier to hit your projectiles on players in a choke point since their movement is limited. If you allow the other team to get through the choke point and out into the open, suddenly killing them gets much harder since they have more movement options. Your positioning will also vary depending on your health and ammo. As a demo man, reloading takes forever. This is why I usually start in a more passive position and move closer to the front line when my clip is full, shoot most of my ammo, and then back up to a safer location to reload. You don't always have to back up in order to reload, this is going to depend on your position as well as your team. If you're playing in a strong spot with your team around you, you probably don't have to retreat if you completely unload both of your weapons. Anyways, while I could ramble about Demo Man fundamentals for at least another 20 minutes, and maybe I will in another video, let's move on to the actual matchups. Roll the transition! Grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I hurt people. Scout is probably Demo Man's hardest counter. Your main objective while fighting a scout is to zone him so he can't get too close since if you can keep him at or further than your ideal range, you have a fighting chance. If you let a scout get too close to you, you are doomed unless you can miraculously two-pipe him. Or if the scout is really bad, which then in that case you are probably fine since he's going to miss all of his shots and run away. Speaking of two-piping scouts, this is certainly possible. As with all class matchups, the difficulty of the matchup and usually the outcome is based on the skill of both players. Oftentimes, once you have judged the ability of the other team's scout to be below your own, you can skip the whole zoning thing and just too sticky or too pipe them. If you find yourself in a game with a really good scout, your counter strategy will depend on how far away he is as well as what he is doing. If he's at this range, then you are probably screwed. If you have pipes loaded, go for the Hail Mary 2 pipe. If the scout is at mid to long range but is busy with something else, you can try to tag him with some sticky spam. Most good scouts will back up if they eat a sticky or two, but if they don't back up, you should be able to win the fight from this range if you get the drop on him. 
If he is mid to long range and seems to be targeting you, try to use your sticky bombs to cut off the quickest path to you, and then the next quickest path, and then so on. Also, depending on your current positioning, you might want to start backing up. Once you have blocked off the scout's movement options towards you, you can try to cut off his routes away from you to trap him. If the scout decides that he's going to run at you, you can detonate the stickies that you placed earlier to deal enough damage to bring him into the one-shot range. Like I said before, many scouts are going to run away if they're below one-shot range, but if they keep running at you, you can continue to zone them while backing up if you're still far enough away. If the scout has gotten super close at this point, you can try to pull out your pipes since they are hopefully within one-shot range. Unfortunately for you, this strategy is far from flawless. If the scout starts on high ground, it can be a lot harder to cut off his approach since scout can double jump over your stickies. Depending on the map geometry, you won't have anywhere to place your stickies to prevent his approach. A midair scout is slightly easier to pipe than a grounded scout, so if you're expecting this, you can use this to your advantage. Also, you should be aware that a scout can shoot the stickies that you place down in an attempt to zone him. You'll almost never see this in pubs, but it can be devastating if you aren't expecting it. Playing around your team is going to make this matchup a lot easier, especially if you have an Engineer. I find that fighting a very good scout isn't bad at all as long as my team is decent and I'm aware of where my team is playing. This way, a scout who wants to push me to kill me is going to have to avoid dying to my teammates and my sticky spam in order to get close enough to kill me. Remember that scout is the king of 1v1s so you should be trying to avoid giving him this option. Keep him zoned out and play with your team and scout is not a problem. If God had wanted you to live, he would not have created me! Soldier is another difficult matchup for Demoman. Soldier's high mobility means that he can close the distance between you very quickly, and when he is up close, he generally has the upper hand. Fortunately for you, you have a better chance fighting a soldier at this range than a scout. His slow firing and slow traveling rockets can be baited out with good movement and can also be used to surf to get away. Soldier also has a much larger hitbox and slower boots on the ground movement speed than Scout, so your extremely high DPS can be realized in this matchup. Just like fighting a Scout, you want to avoid being up close to a Soldier. You can attempt to use your stickies to zone the Soldier, but unless you are able to control enough of the map that a Soldier is unable to high bomb you, there isn't really a way to prevent yourself from getting bombed. If you know that a Soldier likes to high bomb, you can try trapping somewhere to kill him in the middle of his jump. While this doesn't come into play often, it can work. The best way to avoid dying to soldier bombs is good positioning. Play with and around your team, so if a soldier decides he's going to bomb you, he's taking a bad fight. In this case, oftentimes piping the soldier once is enough for him to get cleaned up by the rest of your team. Soldiers love to play on high ground, which you are uniquely able to challenge due to the arc of your projectiles. A distracted soldier on high ground can be a pretty easy kill if you are able to land some spam on him. You will also notice that when a soldier takes damage, they almost always make a beeline for the nearest health pack. You can certainly use this to your advantage. Also, there are many spots that soldiers just can't help standing in that are ripe for sticky trapping. You can learn many of these spots by simply noticing where good soldiers like to stand, or even by playing soldier yourself. If there is a good soldier on the other team, you will need to be careful when walking through tight choke points or a contestant area that has a lot of good soldier high ground. Remember that you are vulnerable to getting juggled, especially when walking through tight choke points. Pyro is the first of many favorable matchups for Demoman. Let me just start by getting this out of the way. Pyro can air blast. That means if the Pyro is good, you should not shoot pipes at him unless absolutely necessary. You are putting both yourself and your team at risk if you are shooting pipes at a good Pyro in mid to close range. It is okay to spam pipes at a pyro if they are far enough away that if they do hit the reflect, it will detonate before it gets back to you or your teammates. At mid-range, stickies are a much more reliable source of damage, and even if a pyro reflects them, they cannot harm your teammates. Similar to Scout and Soldier, Pyro will want to get close to you in order to have a better chance of killing you. You will want to use your stickies combined with good positioning to prevent a good pyro from doing this. At medium range, you will have no issue killing a pyro with sticky spam. They can reflect your stickies, but they can't reflect all of them since you can shoot faster than they can reflect, and you control when the bombs detonate. If a pyro does manage to get close to you, I find that going for a sticky pipe sink can work really well even against good pyro players. This works especially well if they are WM1ing since they will have a hard time seeing you switch weapons through their flames. Similar to Scout and Soldier, playing close to your team will help prevent pyro from melting you in close quarters. 
begins my thousand year reign of blood! Demo versus Demo can be a difficult matchup since the other Demo Man is equally as dangerous as you at your ideal range. I find that this matchup depends on game sense and positioning due to Demo's fast time to kill. If you are playing against a very good Demo, poor positioning is a death sentence. Another variable is the ability of both teams since Demo's true strength shine through when his team is making space for him to gain more map control. Obviously this is a factor in other matchups, but I find this to be especially important in this case. A good Demo Man is an oppressive force, especially when his team is playing around him. Fortunately for you, rarely anybody plays stock Demo Man in pubs and even fewer are actually good at it. When there is a stock demo on the other team, you will need to be even more careful when committing through choke points. Some points can be nearly unwinnable for blue if a red demo man is allowed to live. Upward Last is a great example of this. If the demo is positioned well, it will often require a team effort to dislodge him. I don't have too much to say about fighting stock demo since he's super OP. Keep in mind the positioning and map control fundamentals from the start of this video. On defense, hold choke points with your team, and on offense, try to break through choke points as fast as you can to get out into the open. If you can do this, the opposing demo man will have a hard time dealing with you. I suppose I should also mention Demo Knight and Hybrid Knight here as well. If the demo man doesn't have Islander with lots of heads, you can basically treat him like a pyro minus the whole don't shoot pipes at him spiel. If the Demo Knight has lots of heads, you might have to treat it like a scout matchup where you use stickies to zone him. This will greatly depend on the skill of the Demo Knight. You can use your explosives to juggle the Demo Knight, which renders his only source of damage completely useless. Hybrid Knight is basically the same, except he can shoot pipes. This matchup should be no issue since the Demo has decided to engage in the world's shittiest Faustian bargain, trading the most OP weapon in the game for a mediocre movement ability and some damage resistance. WHICH ONE OF YOU IS CRYING?! Fighting a heavy is heavily skewed in your favor. If you are a newer player, you likely struggle against heavies, but you will get a lot better at killing them as you play the game more. Heavy's biggest strength is his high damage per second, which ironically both directly and indirectly contribute to his plethora of weaknesses. Heavy requires sustained line of sight on his opponents to deal damage to them. This means that he is unable to shoot multiple targets at once like Demo and Soldier. It also means every time he switches targets during a fight without actually killing what he was shooting at, he is not dealing any damage when he could be dealing damage. Heavy must be spun up and moving at a snail's pace to even shoot his main source of damage, which means that he is extremely easy to hit with your stickies and pipes. You can abuse all of these weaknesses at once by using map geometry to corner peak the Heavy. The idea here is to only be in the Heavy's line of sight for long enough to fire an explosive at him, and then duck under cover again until your weapon is almost ready to fire, then peek him again to shoot. If you do this optimally, you will win this fight with ease, taking barely any damage. The key to not dying to Heavy is to be aware of your positioning and listen for the obvious sound cue of his spun up minigun. Be careful when you are traversing the map, don't just blindly walk through choke points or past corners. The only time you should really be losing to a Heavy is when he gets the drop on you, so you want to avoid him surprising you. If you do find yourself in an up-close encounter with a Heavy and you don't have any map geometry nearby to shield yourself, you do still have a few options. You could try to out-DPS the Heavy by using your grounded movement to dodge his minigun for long enough to burst him down. I would recommend shooting him with two stickies and then switching to your pipes for the maximum damage per second. If you don't hit 100 damage stickies, then you will need to shoot him with three stickies and a pipe. If he has overheal, or if you think this heavy can aim competently, you can also attempt to damage surf away by jumping and crouching. Just remember that being in this situation is the worst case scenario and should not happen if you are positioning well. Heavy players don't really have much counterplay, especially versus a demo man. The best heavy players will head glitch on objects to cover their hitbox as much as they can, but the arc of your projectiles allows you to land spam on them no problem. Drunk on the battlefield ain't no way to be, son. Demo Man Hard Counters Engineer This matchup is so unfair for Engineer, I can't tell if it's funny or sad. While Engineer does have some counterplay with his extremely obnoxious secondaries, they are most of the time simply stalling the inevitable. The ideal way to fight against an Engineer will depend heavily on their loadout since Engineer has many unlocks that completely transform his playstyle. I'll mostly focus on if the Engineer is running level 3 sentries with the Wrangler since you won't really have any issues dealing with any other secondary or primary. The pistol is good, but there is pretty much no reason to run it on Engineer when the other options are available. The short circuit is straight up worse than the Wrangler, and while it can be annoying when the Engineer is spamming it while pushing the payload, you can abuse the arc of your projectiles to still land spam. 
The Wrangler isn't that big of a deal, it's just kind of annoying. The only time the Wrangler is a real problem for me is when my team is unable to help me get enough map control to have a long enough time to spam the Engineer out, and the Engineer is able to tank his gun with the Wrangler until I get forced back or I die to his team. If your team doesn't suck, you can clear out enough of the map in order to safely spam the Sentry gun. Depending on the map and where the Sentry is placed, you might have to corner peek the Sentry gun similar to how you would corner peek a Heavy. If the Sentry is far enough away, you can simply stay in its line of sight while you spam the gun. If you're having trouble dealing with the Sentry, or if you just want to ruin an Engineer's day, you can always equip the Lock and Load. Outside of its higher damage to buildings, it also makes it possible to spam certain Sentry spots that would not have been possible to pipe normally. If you're playing against a Battle Engineer, you can apply the advice from the section about Scout, since Battle Engi is pretty much just Worst Scout who will occasionally cost you a pipe or two to kill a mini Sentry. Would you like a second opinion? You are all so ugly! Medic is the undisputed strongest class in TF2. His overheal and uber mechanics are meta-defining, and his burst heal potential with the Crusader's crossbow make him an invaluable part of the team. That being said, Medic himself isn't much of a threat to you, it's his patience that you have to fear. While a Medic who efficiently overheals his teammates is rare in pubs, it can make all matchups much harder for you. Fighting a power class that is being healed can be quite difficult if they are a skilled player. Oftentimes your best bet is to avoid that fight until you have your team with you. This is completely anecdotal, but players who are getting pocketed seem to be more aggressive than usual and die to sticky traps very often, so keep that in mind as well. If you or your team are able to kill the player or players the medic is mainly pocketing, he should be pretty easy pickings. Most medics will run away if their pocket dies, so sticky in their escape route can be quite effective. Just be careful for a medic who decides to go for a random crit uber saw or some other shenanigans. Arguably medic's biggest threat to your well-being is his uber charge. Stopping 8 seconds of invulnerability is difficult as demo since, unlike Pyro, you can't just right click in their general direction. You do still have plenty of counterplay. You can position yourself in such a way to avoid dying to the uber, and place a minefield of stickies around the ubered player so that when the uber ends, kablooey. You can also juggle ubered players if you detonate a sticky right at their feet, or if you pipe them at the lower part of their hitbox. Just be careful with this since you could inadvertently assist the other team by knocking them in the wrong direction. While this is a video about class matchups and not target priority, I feel the need to mention this in this section. Newer players seem to either focus the other team's medic way too much, or not at all. As a demo man, you can easily out DPS a medic's healing. If a medic is positioned well, you should shoot at the player he is healing instead of overextending to try and kill the medic and dying to his pocket. That being said, if the medic is in a terrible spot, it is definitely worth it to focus him since he is not getting healed and the medic dying will make killing his heal target far easier. Bombs away! Ah, creep! The most important thing to do when playing against a good sniper is to focus on positioning. That is, avoid sightlines whenever possible. I know, I know, this is super groundbreaking advice that you've never heard before, but it's just true. Ironically, Demoman is one of the better equipped classes to deal with sniper, but the matchup still kinda sucks. Ideally, your team will be holding or taking map control, which makes sniper much easier to play against. If the sniper is unable to post up at the end of a long sightline because you are controlling that area up close, he can't easily headshot you and your team. If you are unable to prevent the sniper from peeking, at least you can attempt to not peek the sightline he is holding. You also have the option to just bomb at the sniper. This is much better when you are attacking since your spawn will be faster, because usually bombing for a sniper in the enemy's backlines means that you're going to die with him. Sniper players tend to get tunnel vision, so if you do bomb at the sniper, it can be pretty easy to completely dunk on him since he will be standing relatively still. There are still times when peeking the sniper sightline is inevitable, so you will have to do your best to use your movement to make it difficult for the sniper to hit you. As a demo, you are uniquely capable of killing players from across the map because your pipes have no damage falloff. Because of this, you can actually attempt to out-snipe a sniper if you have no other choice. You can also charge your stickies to poke at the sniper from a range. If you combine this with using map geometry to protect your cranium and pressure the sniper when you and your team are moving up, you will be much better off. Again, your projectiles travel in an arc, so depending on the map geometry, you can even pressure the sniper without having to peek him. Don't feel bad, you did a fine job tossing your little balls around. Demo vs Spy is an interesting matchup. I don't often find myself being forced to fight spies. Most of the time, my team is able to catch the spy before they even get to me, or maybe a spy realizes that I'm not an easy target and goes back to bullying free-to-plays. 
Ideally, as a demo man, you won't have to waste any of your precious time or ammo disposing of the spy. Unfortunately, spy mains are incredibly dedicated and will often have thousands of hours on spy while hardly touching any other class, and meanwhile your team will be completely f through this, so. When you are playing against a good spy, you will have to turn around a lot more than usual. Since Demo Man has to spend a lot of time reloading, I find it efficient to start in a more passive position until my whole clip is loaded, and then I start to aggress and shoot at players with my projectiles, and then when I run low on ammo or health, I back up to reload. It is during this reload phase that I will keep an eye out for Spy since I won't have much else to do or shoot at. If you manage to kill the Spy, you can often predict when he will show up again because you can see his spawn timer and then from there predict how long it will take for him to get behind again. Like I said, a lot of these spy mains have thousands of hours on spy and will do the exact same thing like every life, so predictable is pretty much their middle name. And then they have the audacity to complain about how bad spy is. Anyways, speaking of spy mains being predictable, let's talk about trick stabs. There are certain situations that you can kind of just tell that a spy is going to try and trick stab you. If he goes around a corner for a second or makes a beeline for a staircase. As I mentioned before, your time is typically better spent dealing with the other team's more high impact classes, but if you do want to kill the spy, be very careful when following him like this. Remember your projectiles are more effective at mid-range, so closing the distance into melee range is not only unnecessary, but also risking a face stab. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about trick stabs, back to looking out for spy. In the time that the other team is not pushing or applying any pressure, you can also try to look for spy. Generally speaking, your time is much better spent setting down traps or spamming the enemy, but if the other team is getting carried by their spy, you can spend time looking for him and then focus more on your usual role when he's dead. Good spies understand the flow of TF2 and will target you when you are distracted. This is where having a decent team comes in. If your team is good, they can deal with the spy if he tries to decloak on you, but if your team is bad, dealing with spy as a demo is going to be a lot harder. If you can keep this in mind, you can often guess when a spy will be decloaking behind you and turn around for an easy kill. Also, simply being aware of the sound cues such as spy taking fall damage or the decloak sound will save you from getting stabbed. Also, for some reason, so many spy players are attracted to corners like moths to a flame, so if you're looking for a spy, shoot a pipe at a corner. Alright, I think I've covered everything. Uh, please let me know if I forgot something important in the comments or if you disagree with something or, you know, whatever. I hope you enjoyed the video. I wasn't even playing real anyways. Now I can kill Sam. You're not gonna kill me a single fucking time. What the fuck?